Hey friends, June Perry here, your Chapman Stick Player friend with the Freehands Academy. Today is Tuesday, February the 6th. Uh, not really a Friday, uh, but I am excited to talk a little bit more about the Source Audio EQ2. So this is the only pedal that I have on the bass side for my NS Stick, and it's doing just fine. So I'm going to talk a little bit about the, the settings, specifically um, on the pedal how to configure this if you're um, using it with the two-channel instrument like the Chapman stick. If you want to stick around and see how I'm configuring it using the, the Neuro Editor or um, with a MIDI controller, I'm going to use the Morningstar MC6 Pro uh, just to kind of um, show you how you can use it if you want to set it in a more of a remote location on your, um, on your pedal board. So let's get started. So let's look at the dimensions of the pedal to start with. Pretty standard enclosure. Going to be about, what, um, about four and a half inches. Uh, the length is going to be about four and a half inches. Um, so about 11.63 centimeters, about seven centimeters wide, 2.75 inches across. Pretty standard fare for pedals. If we compare that with like a Moss pedal real quickly. Oh God. We could try that again. We can see that, um, right, about the same height. The Boss platform has that kind of activating switch at the at the front that's so sweet. You can just hit it from any angle and, and activate it. The EQ2 just has that one switch. So a low profile, it's got two ins and two outs, right? On each side, it's got five pin MIDI there as well. It's got a USB mini. Uh, it's gonna need nine volts, so you can't power it using um, just USB, it's gonna need nine volts. I think you can get five volts out of uh, USB. Uh, about 180 milliamps. And then finally, it's got this control input, which can be used with some of the proprietary source audio um, pedals um, for increasing or decreasing the preset or activating the tune or things of that nature. You can also connect it to the NeuroHub, which is pretty cool if you're into source audio pedals, which I am. Um, but this one is just plenty for me right now. Um, let's see, what else? I think that about does it for ins and outs. Um, we'll talk briefly about kind of the switches on it. So you've got the switch that turns it on and turns it off. Now this supports long switches, um, or hold rather, uh, and then quick um, uh, double taps. So you've got three different ways you can hit this pedal, which is great. You've got your preset switch right here. You can hold that to activate, um, to save, um, to save a, an EQ setting. And then you've got this encoder knob here, which is really where you do most of your work. This You can press this as well as turn it. It has kind of a nice tactile feel it, to it. Finally, this is the output switch. Um, at first, I was a little bugged by it because it doesn't have really kind of a tactile knob at the top that tells you you're at Unity. But in looking closer at the manual, you'll see that the blue light glows brighter as it's louder, which is pretty awesome in a live situation. And then also, if you're watching the top of the monitor um, or the screen of the EQ2, when you pass Unity, it will blink twice to just let you know where you are. So Source Audio, tip of hat to you for giving us other ways of finding Unity than just having a little switch on top. All right. So let's take a look at what the EQ2 can do, just kind of out of the box. And to start, you know, to, to activate the pedal, you just, you just press it one time. Now, the way I've got it configured right now, and there's a number of different ways you can configure it, if you press and hold, you see it's going to advance the presets there. Right? And it'll advance through any number of four different presets. Now, if I double tap it, it'll activate the tuner. So now the pedal is muted, which is fantastic, and I'm able to actually tune the instrument. So um, right there, you've got three different ways you can use this pedal, um, which is this single switch, which is pretty grand. Now, if you want to make changes to the actual bands of the EQ without using the editor, it's really easy to do. You push the encoder down, and then you move it to the band that you want to adjust. Right, so I need more mids do that right there. Pull that back down, press and hold, you can go kind of you know, sculpt your sound. And then as mentioned earlier, so then, so that's the encoder. So that's how you would build basically like a basic sound, you'd press this and you'd save it. You can see here for the output, if I've got that all the way to the left, it doesn't even glow because there's no volume. So right here, it's not quite as bright. 
just because it's set to about, what, 9 o'clock, 10 o'clock. But if I move it all the way over, it's going to glow very bright. Pretty cool. And then, yeah, if you move it over Unity, you'll see it flash twice up at the top there. See, it lets me know I'm at Unity. That's pretty dope, right? Okay, so that's that's what we see the pedal can do, just kind of out of the box. So now what we'll do is, is we'll um we'll hook up the neuro editor. All right, so now I've got the EQ2 open um, in the neuro desktop editor on my Mac, and I'm looking. I've clicked on the little gear, um, and I've hooked up the the pedal via USB mini, and. Um, Looking at the, the hardware options. So the first option here is uh, true bypass. It seems like a no-brainer. Um, the on-off switch uh, kind of setup that I like is this number seven, which allows me to basically advance presets by holding it down, right? And then activate the switch by pressing it once. And then if I double press it, it puts me into this tuner mode, right? Usually puts me into that tuner mode. There we go. I, I don't think I'm clicking it fast enough. So gets you one click gets you out and um, back into being able to look for presets, activate the pedal, or activate the tuner. Pretty cool. Another option if you don't want to double press or, or double click is to use this option number one, which is downstroke and hold presets. And so the, basically, it's got four presets. The fifth position is going to be your tuner. So if I hold this down, it's going to go into that tuner mode. Or not quite yet. It'll advance the presets, and then the fifth position is the tuner. Right? Then what you have to do is you have to press it down right, and hold it down one time, and then hold it down. And that gets you back into your presets. So that takes a little getting used to couple other options you can use with upstrokes, um, but these were the two most functional, especially if you're just using the pedal on its own. Um, looking at the other kind of options, the only other thing I was really interested, well, there's a few things here. So the default routing. So we've got this setup for stereo in and stereo out because we're using a two channel instrument. Now, if you're just a bass player and you've got two different instruments, you can leave them plugged into the EQ2 and have two different EQ settings for them that route back into the same bass amp just a nice option to have. Um, but I've got it for stereo in and stereo out um, when I do use it for both sides of the instrument, even though currently I'm just using it on the NS. Um, the tuner reference is set to 440. The tuner instrument range is set to bass low because it's on the bass side. Now, it does have a tuner and it does have two channels, but it does also have a tuner default input, which means you can only have the tuner on one side. You've got a couple tricks up your sleeve if you've got an active two pickup um, and you're using it on the bass side, you can set it to mono and tune both sides. That's pretty clever. So I've got the EQ2 open here in the Neuro Desktop Editor and you can see I've got it set up for split mode. So I've got two different channels here, but we're gonna start with just uh, some of the controls along the top here. So you've got a separate output volume for both channels as well as um, an input trim for each side as well. Limiter, noise gate, input, output, routing, external switch. We're not going to talk too much about the external switch, um, but you can have some fun with the neuro uh, hub if that's something that you're interested in and you love source audio pedals. So I select enable. I do like to have the limiter on. It's kind of a one button feature. If you select link channels, it's only going to limit the loudest of the two channels. So when I'm using it for um, both sides of the instrument, it's not necessary to have that on. For the noise gate, I've got both channels selected. The gate source says um, it makes you choose one or the other. So I wasn't entirely clear on how that was um, affecting the pedal. In the, in the documentation, it says select the input source for the noise gate, either channel one or two. But when you're enabling it, you can enable it for one channel, channel two, or both channels. So maybe there's something that I missed there. Uh, maybe someone in the comments will straighten me out. You can set the threshold here for your noise gate. Um, the input output routing, this is really clever. And this is where source audio pedals really show their value for um, instruments like the, the Chapman stick because you've got such um, 
so many options for configuring the, the pedal itself, right? So, um, you know, after you get across those kind of basic features, you know, you, you do finally get into the equalizer, which is really the, the power of the pedal. So it's really easy to manipulate. You've got gain on the right side here if you want to bump up the volume as well. You've got, I think, 18 dB of level for each band here. And uh, there's a bunch of different deep set features here um, with uh, shelving and peaking that you can configure um, as well as some uh, like a high pass filter, which is on by default. So that takes a little getting used to. So um, yeah, this is where you're going to really be able to sculpt your sound, whether you're using it in mono or in stereo, you know, and you can see, um, and I kind of displayed this last week that, you know, you can... You can, can route each channel um, as you see fit. Now I've got a couple presets here. You can see some that I've got. I've got one mono setting here, but for the most part, I'm using it in stereo. So now what we'll do is, is we'll, we'll hook up the, uh, the EQ2 to my uh, Morningstar MC6, and I'll show you how you can uh, activate it remotely. In the final part of this video, I'll show you how easy it is to use uh, a MIDI controller to connect to your EQ2. Not so sure I really like that view. Let's try that one. So we've got a Morningstar MC6 Pro, which is a fancy MIDI controller. Uh, you can use any sort of class compliant MIDI controller though. Um, the way I've got this set up right now is it's um, got TRS um, sending to 5-pin MIDI uh, input on the EQ2. So um, the way that this is configured is a single click will activate it. Uh, a double click will activate the, will advance the preset and then holding it will advance the tuner. And so that's all configured in the Morningstar, but just a fantastic way to add some functionality to the EQ2. So let's take a look at that. That turns it on, turns it off. Holding it down will get me to my tuner. And then finally, if I want to advance the preset, give it a quick double click. Right. Pretty cool way to use the pedal. You know, who knew that your EQ pedal would have a limiter and a noise gate. Also be a mute button that had a tuner built into it. Right? It can also be used as a boost pedal. It's very versatile. There's a number of different ways to use it. So tip of that to Source Audio for making such a, a, a groovy pedal for, um, for Chapman stick players. And uh, thanks to you for tuning and watching the video. If you've got comments or feedback, if there's anything I missed along the way, um, comments are free. If you want to subscribe, that'd be great too. Let me know what you do and don't like. And uh, thanks for tuning in. We'll see you next week um, on Freehands Friday. Cheers.